I want to talk about something which is really important philosophically, which is the limits of epistemology and this the philosophical tradition of what are the bounds of our knowledge and what ought we to do about that. And so the, the fact of our existence is that we're very limited beings, you know, in principle, you could have a being a thousand times smarter than us who would have access to a much, much greater, be able to take in much more as cognitive perceptual input and therefore be much smarter and wiser. And there, there's this quote from uh, Sam Harris, who I've talked about on this channel before, and even though I have substantive disagreements on him, especially regarding God and religion, he has this great point. He says, we're not and he's a neuroscientist, he says, we're not that different from chimps if you actually think about our physiology and our neurology, where pretty similar, where, you know, only a little bit off. And chimps have absolutely no idea what's going on. So you have to put, basically, if you're going to be humble before the limits of your knowledge, that we know maybe not 0.001% of what there is to know, and half the things we think we know might be wrong. And so... This is, e Elon Musk made this point when he was talking about the book Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, is that whatever the ultimate question is, the meaning of life, the universe, and everything, the answer itself is the universe, life, and everything. So we have the answer, and the question is how to, and what you have to do is formulate the question properly, and... In the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy books, Earth is essentially a giant computer that's trying to make these questions through producing copies of itself in the form of sentient beings. And with all of the computing power of all of history throughout all of Earth, it's still unable to come up with the correct question. And so this is, and so you'll almost get this really very right, but then he sort of goes off. Um, and he's half right and half wrong, which is emblematic of, of that. He says, you know, a new philosophy of the future is needed, that it needs to be motivated by curiosity about the universe to actually find out, to actually have an ethic which unites, you know, religious and political systems of actually discovery. And this makes a lot of sense because this goes back to, you know, Columbus and Magellan, that part of the part of the Western and and human spirit is discovery and exploration and conquest. And I think we've lost that to some degree. And that matches the utility function of the universe, which is the self-discovery. And so he and so he says, yeah, I believe it should be curiosity about the universe, expand humanity to become a multi-planet, then interstellar species to see what's out there. And Chris Langan made this point in his um Bible study group. He did a post to teleconference about that recently. And what he said is that you actually have to go a step beyond that is that we, at some point, we can become highly evolved beings enough that with ordinary mechanical travel, that this is really just an example of Moss kind of grifting. With ordinary mechanical travel, it, we aren't bound by the, with ordinary mechanical travel, we're bound by the speed of light because this is the speed at which the universe is evolving. So you obviously can't go faster than that. In we know from Einstein's relativity that you reach an infinite mass and then come to a halt. So once you get close to the speed of light. And so what you actually have to do is a, a sort of metaphysical travel that once we become highly evolved beings enough, we can actually almost extract ourselves into the non-terminal, into the processing, the mental, the spiritual domain, and then reinstantiate ourselves el elsewhere in the universe. So that's, so you actually have to generalize what Elon Musk is talking about to a metaphysical as opposed to a mechanistic exploration of the universe that we, and this is, and Neil, and we have no idea how great the evolution of the human species could get because this is a point Neil deGrasse Tyson made that if you have a species which is five or ten percent smarter than humans the intellectual the artistic the whatever breakthroughs that they could make is would be incredible they'd have you know kids learning calculus at age four and they and whatever so 
if you but what you need is a human singularity and the way to do this is to actually ensure the evolution of human beings over time and not the destruction or stagnation of that is to actually have a model of how of how human beings fit into the universe within our current cognitive perceptual framework within the limits of our the current limits of our knowledge because there are no absolute limits to our knowledge but the current limits of our knowledge is that you actually have to make a model which unites all of the philosophical and scientific and linguistic systems which we've built up over the last millennia and the what this does the the ctmu does this the cognitive theoretic model of the universe it's all in the, its name cognitive theory model and universe it relates it says that language or cognitive theory is self-dual to the universe through its model so it shows the actual correspondence between theory and observation and thus allow and thus the provides the the groundwork for any possible further development or discovery so that's the it's a it's well aerated soil from which more knowledge and beauty and truth and goodness can flourish within all of the traditions of the world so it actually accelerates human development instead of stagnating it it's not a it's not a small pot trying to root bind and choke the already growing knowledge of the world it's trying to accelerate that because to some degree our knowledge is stagnating and this is in large part a problem of academia and so the human singularity is that we realize our true metaphysical identity and are thus able to transcend ourselves and this is an opposition to the tech singularity where we kind of continue to consider ourselves as mechanistic automatons at the you know to, that can be are essentially just utility for a kind of parasitic overclass which um which is technological in nature and you have this kind of egregore the um the conscious being get, which is given rise to by the thought patterns of this kind of hive mind it's a eusocial species where all utility is converted into economic output and there's no real room for metaphysics or spirituality or religion in that and so that and so that constricts whereas the ctmu allows us to say you know that human beings were actually local images of god and through our self-discovery we have unlimited potential for how good we can be so the answer to not knowing enough is to evolve to the point where we can know more and that's the singularity a singularity is a point beyond which things could get exponentially better and so and that's what's been traditionally called in religion the messianic era and so the ctmu contains isomorphically within it all possible knowledge of all possible perspectives because it actually relates mind or language to reality and so even though we haven't, like, for example, we haven't discovered a unified field theory or an explanation for leptogenesis, which are respectively, you know, uniting our current theories of quantum mechanics with general relativity or explaining the discrepancy between matter and antimatter in the universe. But these have to be explained by the CTMU because that's actually the model. It's a true theory of everything because it's not a deterministic. It doesn't tell you every fact about the universe, but it allows you to have a framework in which to discover those and that's why we need so many people to be fluent in this foundational language of reality so we can solve those problems and evolve the human species past what it what we ever thought it could be and so but the the other the other thing about this is that you also within our current you know even though we're connected to the source of all knowledge and power we actually know comparatively very little about god you have to have humility before god which is logos it's all possible knowledge and that kind of represents the god at least in one of his three aspects as the logos is you know all possible knowledge triadically knowing and creating and representing and modeling itself and so this is the ultimate terminus of humanity's evolutions actually return to god but you have to have humility 
before God because this is what the the psalm says that we can never express one ten thousandth of the of the gratitude owed to God for the loving kindness which he bestows on us and the implication of this is that we could never know how great how good and loving God has been within our current frame of mind and we or know one ten thousandth of God's true being and so you have to have humility and also a desire to serve that which transcends your understanding and so the this is the so everyone actually this is a point made by jordan peterson that everyone kind of has a low resolution cognitive theoretic model of the universe that we we model the universe and we actually have pretty much everything filled in just at very low resolution like i know very little about how plumbing works but i know like what a plumber is and that's all i need to know for that for my particular purposes which is as not a plumber and so but so the ctmu it says all of that is contained within the same body of knowledge which can then grow and this is the the answer to job and the job is people really misunderstand the story but the answer to job is that the the workings of god's creation are so marvelous and complex that we can't understand why you know bad things happen to the righteous or why there's suffering and evil but we have to accept those as facts about reality you know there's you know, there's this parable of you know if a if a, a chimpanzee had to be had to be you know tortured in order to generate a medical cure which could would save a billion people the chimpanzee would never understand the meaning but we so we have to have humility before god and to marvel at the sublimity of creation the rabbi Abraham joshua heschel says that our own speechlessness at creation becomes our worship and so this is what this is what the book of job is talking about that god is so beyond human machinations that you that you it's not something to be criticized because that's essentially saying that the being in which you inhabit is fundamentally cruel and absurd where it's actually and the counterpart to that is the being that you inhabit and the personal being which you inhabit is God is sublime and holy and life could be something more than it is. And that's the fundamental message of, I think, really the CTMU. So you have, you, you can't, you know, be resentful and bitter. You have to praise and love and serve. And that is, and in that, and in expanding, you know, human beings, prospects not necessarily mechanistically not making new technology for an old for an oligarchical you know capitalist class but actually you know expanding the the knowledge and the and the beauty and sublimity of the world is actually why we're here to be to be you know a light to to the universe the universe gives rise to consciousness and consciousness gives meaning to the universe so this is that's a quote from John Wheeler. So, you know, you have to you have to be that light, and that is the ultimate answer to our epistemological limitations. So thank you. Let the light shine forth in darkness. May the